So here's the deal. Last week I kind of talked a little bit. My mind was kind of going a million different places last week, and so um, if it was kind of confusing, I apologize for that. Um, but I will say this. Partly I was kind of waiting to see how Rick was going to, sermon was going to go this weekend. He and I had been talking, and so I was kind of curious, like, how it was going to go. So the whole Supreme Court decision and some of those issues and questions that get raised with that, um, honestly, I'm not really going to tackle that right now. If you want to talk to me about it later, that's cool. I'll do that. Honestly, what you probably ought to do is just go watch the video from Rick this last weekend. He did a really good job of dealing with that, um, and I think it's really worth your time to go watch it, honestly. And so you can go to the New Life Gardener site. Um, and just kind of click there, find the sermon video, and watch it. Uh, he does a really good job of handling some of the issues. If you have further questions, though, um, please don't hesitate to come talk to me. I'd, I'd be more than glad to sit down and talk to you. I'm just not going to do a lot of it right now, um, at least not directly. Now, some of what we talk about may get affected indirectly. but um, So, with that being said, we're going to tackle some issues regarding music and movies and media and honestly, now it really becomes more of an issue of not just those, but even social media. I got, I got, kind of got to thinking about it today, partly as I was sending out an Instagram that went through Twitter and went through everything, back to our Facebook and all that. That it's not just movies and music, and TV, TV and that. It's, it's really social media as well, um, and all the various forms of that. And how do you engage that? And, you know, questions kind of come up in your head, like, would Jesus have a Twitter account? Uh, everyone, yeah, well, of course he would. Like, how could he not? I mean, I mean, I don't know. You get into all kinds of interesting questions, really. But here's what I do want us to kind of start thinking through. And I want to read a few things to you here. Is that an average teen, and honestly, I'd say probably adults now, watches or listens to four to six hours of music a day. You agree? Disagree? Yeah? I, I would agree. It, whatever. I mean, I know adults that leave their TV on all day. I mean, literally. They just leave it on. I mean, some of you do the same. Some of you have it on or listen to music playing on your social media all simultaneously. So you could say, I listen to an hour of music, but I listen to four different sources of music for an hour at the same time, right? No, not all the time, I know, but oftentimes. And so how do you judge, though? And so here's some of the questions that get raised. How do you judge what's good, what's bad? Is there a way to judge that? Do you just judge it because it's PG? Do you judge it because it's G? Do you judge it because it mentions God? It doesn't mention God. How do you even go about thinking through or engaging a culture? Um, and here's the real reality. Whether you know it or not, um, and, and this should work, it is working, I think. Is it? Is it even on? I don't even know that's on. Oh, look at that. Okay. So how do we judge? Here, here's, a, here's some things to be thinking about. How do we judge good or bad? Our choices, you know, all of our choices in all of life are based off of some sort of authority. We, we have some sort of standard that we appeal to. Now, I will say this. This is part of the issue with the whole Supreme Court decision last week. is because basically they stripped it away from Scripture. They now have made themselves as the defining authority on morality. Which does raise all kinds of in interesting issues. Which raises the whole church and state issues and all that. Which you can listen to Rick if you want to go through that more. But in all reality, all of our choices are based off some sort of authority. Now, some of it is just personal preference. Like, I like this band over that band. Why? Just because I like the style. You know, it doesn't, there doesn't have to be rocket science to it necessarily. Um, some of it, though, is how we were raised to believe. Like, I grew up, my dad said this. This is what I've always been taught. I haven't really even thought about it, but that's what dad says, so that's what I do. Fair enough. 
Some of it is we make our decisions based off of what do all my friends say? Like, what side of the room do I go on? Because all my friends went that way. And we don't really know, like, why I think what I think. You know, I mean, we do it all, we do it all over the place. I mean, it's funny, adults do it too. You know, adults, they will sit in the same seat in the church every week. Why? Because that's where you're supposed to sit. I mean, that was, that was my chair. And it's like, it's based off where everyone else is at. And I mean, there's just a lot of, it's just a lot of funny things that we do that all the time. Sometimes it's just whatever's popular. Like whatever you hear the most of. Why is a song this way? Well, I can tell you how the music industry works. They pour a lot of money into getting a song popular and when you hear it all the time, what happens? Everyone likes it. There's big money to get a song to a number one position. That's how the game works. The, a lot of money is poured into certain songs and certain artists. And whether they're that good or not, it doesn't necessarily matter that much. There are, there's, I mean, it's, gets a little more complicated, but it is true, though. Whatever is popular on the TV or radio or whatever else, what, that's why advertising is such a big deal. Because the more you advertise it, the more it's in front of you, and the more you go, oh. And we make our decisions then off whatever is popular. But here's the bottom line, and I think most of you know this at least at some level in your head, that the Bible needs to be your final authority. The Bible needs to be the final authority. And here, here's the question. Is it reliable? Is it reliable? Now, these, and there's a lot of questions that will get raised throughout this series that we're not going to have time to unpack all of it. Some of it is just going to raise questions that is going to make you think and that we'll have to discuss later, more in depth. Um, but here's the deal. If you, if you don't have the Bible as your final, ultimate authority, then you have to go, okay, what is your ultimate authority? What is your ultimate authority? To make decisions, to agree with certain things, to disagree with certain things. We all have some authority we appeal to. The question is just, what is it? And bottom line, a lot of people will say, what's well, me? I, I, I decide my own thing. I don't let anyone tell me. You know, I'm like, I'm a cool cat like that. I roll that way and that I make my own decisions. No one affects me. I do whatever I want. I don't give in to peer pressure because I'm that. Okay, that's fine. Your truth, and, and so what we hear now, and you hear it all the time in school, your truth is okay for you. Your truth is okay for you. We can both kind of coexist even though they're opposite. Well, here's the problem you get into with that kind of thinking. That really what that boils down to then is the guy that has the most money or the most guns wins. And makes the decisions. And that's how it is. It plays out world governments all over the world. If you can't appeal to a final authority, then it really does just boil down to well, whatever I say, whatever you say. Now, again, this can, this can cause a whole other set of discussions in sermon series, um, which we don't have time to unpack right now. But we're just going to go with this assumption for now, that the Bible is our ultimate authority. Unchanging truth is our guide, but here's the problem. The Bible, nowhere in Scripture does it say, thou shalt not listen to pick an artist. Yeah. Well, it might say that, actually. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure it's in there somewhere. No, the Bible never says, thou shalt not listen to Justin Bieber. Or, in all your ways, acknowledge him, but don't watch. Pick a show or a movie. Elbow. <laughs> yeah, it probably does say that too. Um, so here's the problem though. 
the Bible doesn't specifically say like one show or one song or one artist. or It doesn't say that. It doesn't do that. But it does have a lot to say about what we fill our minds with, doesn't it? What do we fill our minds with? And so right now I want somebody to take a look at Romans 12. Someone, someone find that, first person that can find it. I'll, uh, I'll give you something, I don't know. Um, Ephesians 4 and Ephesians 5, we're going to deal with next week. So who wants to read Philippians 4, 8? Yeah, we're not going to do with the Ephesians passage tonight. So Philippians 4, 8, who has that? You'll do that? Okay, sweet. Um, and then I'm going to do the Colossians one, because I'm going to kind of fly through a little bit. So. so, who has Romans 12, 1 to 3? Zoe? Okay, go ahead. Read it good and loud. Real loud, so we can all hear it. Okay. Don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your minds. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. How are, how are you transformed into His image? By the renewing of your mind. Philippians 4.8, someone, uh, yeah, go ahead. All right. So, whatever is noble, pure, honorable, and so forth, fix your mind on those things. I have a starburst on me. <laughs> Can I have another one? Can I have one? Cool. Zoe, there you go. Thanks for reading. So, you know, one of the things that we always, you know, on our trips, on our trips that we take and the stuff to bring and the stuff not to bring, Basically, the last thing on there says, don't do, bring anything or do anything that would violate Philippians 4.8. That's why. Pretty much if you do that, you're pretty much going to be okay. Let's read Colossians, though. Colossians 3. This is a great passage. So go ahead and follow along, Colossians 3. Here's what it says. I'm going to read it kind of quick, because um, we're going to be short on time here in a little bit, but I'm going to try to get through this. It says, if you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Get what he's saying there. Fix your mind on the things that are above, the things that are of God. It says, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Put to death things like sexual immorality. Put to death impurity. Put to death passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. I mean, get the severity of what he's saying here. In these, you too once walked. You used to be like this when you are living in them. But now, you must put them all away. Put away anger, put away wrath, put away malice and slander and obscene talk from your mouth. Okay? Now someone, a uh, quick side note, real quick here. People often talk to me and say, is cussing bad? Because Scripture doesn't say, thou shalt not say. Fill in the four-letter word of your choice, that's not love or hope. Um... But here's, I mean, honestly, let's look at it. What does it say right here? Put away anything that's obscene. Now, some would argue that isn't just swearing. So Some guys and girls can say some really obscene things and be very either negative or just vulgar and never swear. Now, okay, that's a little side note. We'll come back to the text here. So verse 9, it says, Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ in all is all and in all. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, 
put on kindness and humility, meekness and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so that you may also forgive. And above all of these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a pretty big list. And there's some really big principles there about what it means to be a follower of Christ and how we are to be thinking and acting. So I'm going to talk through real quickly a few things. Um, I want to talk through what, basically what does it mean? Um, well, there's two issues here. How do we engage in media then? Are we a mindless consumer? Basically meaning this. Listening, watching everything without ever consciously or critically thinking about what we're absorbing. Now, for those that leave their TV on all day long or their radio on all day long or whatever the case, are you, like, how are you absorbing that? You are absorbing it. You're absorbing everything you hear or see. How often do we sit and critically think through which is the other side. You have a mindless consumer. So the other side is a mindful critique or critic. Listening and watching both carefully and critically, we mindfully engage through the eyes and the ears and a mind of a Christian worldview. Meaning we critically think through, not negatively think through, but we are engaging our mind. How many of us, we turn on this TV and we go, cool, Shark Week, dude. And we laugh at that, but we all do it. Or we'll go to any movie, and we just sit down and go, oh. We don't really think through what is being presented. We don't think through what, what is the truth that's being taught. So, worldview, just to clarify, some of you may wrestle through this. What is a worldview? Well, the question is, we all have a worldview. The question is just, what is it? A worldview basically describes the way the world is or ought to be. We all have a mental image of what the world should look like. We all do. The question is just, what is it? What shapes it? Um, so a worldview basically does this. It answers questions like, who's ultimately in control? Why am I even here? How can I know right from wrong? A worldview will answer that. What's the answer for what's wrong with the world? What's the greatest problem facing the world today? Your understanding and worldview will shape that answer. Like we could spend time writing out your answer to every one of those. And I would venture to say that a lot of times they would be different. Because you all have different things shaping your worldview. We all have it. It's the reason we act in the way we do. It's the reason we dress the way we do. We make decisions in the morning that I'm going to wear this or I'm going to wear that based off of what? My worldview. And what is what I have been told looks good or doesn't look good what is popular or what is not popular. We make these, and oftentimes we make these decisions without even really thinking about it. Sometimes we may just go grab it out of our closet and put it on, and, and we don't really think through, okay, like, why am I wearing this? Why am I not wearing it? Why am I putting on whatever? Why am I buying this shoe or not this shoe? Or whatever the case. Every song, every CD, every artist, every video, every book, Every friend that you have, every relationship that you have, has a worldview and is trying to communicate something 
about the way that we ought to believe and or how to live in this world. Me right now teaching you, I am communicating a worldview to you. It's my worldview. Now, it's shaped by something, hopefully Scripture, and my study of Scripture, and thinking through a lot of different issues. Um, but that's the real reality of it. So, questions to help you discover an artist's worldview. And this can be music, it can be a movie, it can be, you can pick your art, it can be a painter, it could be a potter, whatever. What's the main topic or the theme? What's portrayed as right or wrong? What's the attitude towards authority? That one's a big one. What's the attitude towards authority? Where is human value and worth found? That's another big one. Where do you find your identity? What does it say about how to treat other people? Is it okay to go hook up with her just because she's hot? Legal. That was a question that Rick brought out up this weekend. Just because it's legal doesn't make it right. I can go sleep with another woman tonight, and it would be totally legal if she was over 18. I would also probably end up dead by the morning, but legally I could do it. That does not make it right. You get the difference? So what does it say about how to treat others? What's the source of happiness and satisfaction? I can't get no satisfaction. Why? Well, that's a whole other discussion. Who or what is glorified? Who or what's glorified? Is it hopeful or hopeless? Does it even offer solutions to life's problems? Or does it just gripe about them? What message is it sending about what makes someone successful? How do you know if someone's successful? Is it just because they got the Escalade and they roll? Is that what makes you successful? Is it because you got the nice big house on the hill? Does that make you successful? What are the movies? What are the music? What do the paintings tell you? What is the media, the social media? What's the worldview that they're all communicating? On Instagram tonight, if I were just to scroll through and look at all the pictures and go, okay, what's their worldview? I bet I could tell you pretty quickly. Go to their personal, their page thing, look at all the pictures that they post, which ones they're posting, what they're doing, who they're hanging with, what they're commenting on, and I can tell you the worldview. It doesn't take real long. Go to your Facebook page. It's been three or four minutes kind of looking around on that. Just go through the photos and you can tell you what the worldview is. What's important? What isn't important? Where do you find your source of happiness and satisfaction? What's glorified? What's talked about the most? You listen to people talk. You can tell what's important. Pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. You figure out what's important. So, to go back real quickly here, because we're going we're gonna to break into groups here. Worldview describes the way the world is or ought to be. Are you a mindful critique? Basically, do you think through what you're listening and watching? Both carefully and critically, do you mindfully engage the eyes and ears in a Christian worldview? Or are you just a mindless consumer that you just basically turn it on and don't really think? With ever, without ever really thinking through it, you're just kind of absorbing it, whatever it is. Whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Twitter, you know. Look at all the people you follow on Twitter. Look, what, is your, what does your feed say? If you just sat and looked through your feed, what would it say? You can tell. You can tell kind of what your worldview is, and you can definitely tell what their worldview is by just looking at your feed. 
Are you, are you thinking through it? Are you choosing, hey, you know, maybe I shouldn't follow that person, or I shouldn't engage in that, or maybe I should, but I need to critically think through that. There's a lot of big questions to ask, a lot of things to wrestle through. So we're going to break up in discussion groups. Um, basically this, guys and girls, then uh, probably really freshmen, and then everyone older. Tonight, uh, we'll deal with that later. Um, oh, wait, sorry. I jumped ahead here. Let me just wrap this up with... Basically, here's kind of the main idea. We're going to look at three Ds for the three weeks, okay? Next week's going to be a little different because we're going to be combined. Um, there is youth group next week, so let me just make sure you're, like, um, just because we have the high school mission trip doesn't mean we're not meeting. But um, it will be a little different, and then we'll resume. So there's three weeks, though, that we're going to be doing three Ds to live, living in a 3D world. And it's basically this. this is tonight's first D, discover. You got to discover what the worldview really even is, um, because it really does shape a lot of what you do and think. So um, here, here's a few things that I want us to kind of think about. Um, this week, I, I want you to try and figure out what's being communicated in one of your favorite songs or movies. Okay, so this week, as you're listening to something or that that one song comes on. I want you to see if you can try to figure out what is that about. Okay? Some of you, I know, I back up in effect back over, and this guy I was sitting and listening to these guys. They knew the song right away, but they had no idea what it was about. Or they caught on real quickly what it was really about. Um, that isn't unusual. Um, and some of you, though, I think we asked, uh, we asked the question, though, Maybe another question to really think through, I guess, as you're figuring out what is being communicated, should I keep listening to that? What am I filling my mind with? Uh, we'll deal with some of those kinds of questions in the coming weeks um, as we begin to discern some other things and then decide what to do with it. But, um, you know, here's the real reality, though. We, we live in a world where it's all around us. I mean, we go to the mall. You can't get away from it. I go work out every day, and there's music being played. I don't agree with most of it, honestly. Corey, sorry if you're watching this. Um, but um, it's, uh, it's something that he and I have talked about, though, numerous times. It's like, okay, we're listening to this stuff. And, like, you know, we, I give him a hard time sometimes, but he'll... He'll edit out the songs occasionally and go, oh, well, yeah, that's, that's a little too rough. We got And we kind of joke about it, but at least, at least in that setting, he's thinking about it, and we're, we're thinking about it, and there's some that... But oftentimes, if we're really honest with about it, we're just kind of absorbing stuff. We're not even really thinking about it, are we? Um, so there's, the, there's kind of the question, though. But here's the question that often gets raised. Well, I can listen to that. I, I can I can listen to this much. And we start to say, well, I can listen. Like, how much bad is okay? You know, like how much bad is really okay? Which is really kind of a bad question. When you you know you really think about it. I mean, we talk about it in the whole love, dating, and sex thing. Like, how far can I go with a girl? You know, it's like how far to the edge can I get before, like, I sin. Or how much junk can I fill my mind with before it's a sin or a problem? That's really a pretty stupid question, really, when you think about it. And that's not really how God designed us. You know, it's kind of like the same difference as if I gave you a chocolate chip cookie, except the fact that in that cookie, there was X-Wax in it. Or there was some... Or the cool thing is... And I'll be honest with you, it really wasn't x lax but Trevor got a new bunny. And bunnies have chocolate chips, naturally. It's pretty exciting. They have lots of chocolate chips, in fact. So the question would become, are you okay with one chocolate chip? Or five chocolate chips? I mean, you get the thinking. 
You get the rationale, though, right? I mean, we do this all the time, don't we? That we go, oh, well, you know, I can have, fill in the blank, X amount of chocolate chips. Because it's bad. I know it's bad. Like, I don't normally eat, like, bunny chocolate chips. But, you know, and God must sit there sometimes and go, your thinking is just really whack. Like, or, or are you even thinking? Are you even thinking that you just got the TV on or the radio on and you're not even thinking about all the chocolate chips pouring in? And all the messages that are coming across the airwaves or the social media now through Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and you go, are we even really thinking what we're filling our minds with? Today, as I was kind of preparing this, I was kind of interesting because I was, I was posting a, I was posting a quote or something, or I was posting something else, and I stumbled upon this quote, which I thought was really interesting. And so I reposted it because I thought it was worthwhile. It said this: It says, "When secularization has had its full sway, it will leave a generation devoid of shame." And if you show me a generation that lacks shame, I will show you a generation that is monstrous in its appetite. Meaning this. There's basically what he's getting at. Is when you lose your conscious or you don't engage your mind anymore. That you just... That you just mindlessly consume and you no longer have a grid you are never satisfied and you will fill your mind with anything and everything and you will act like it and if you want proof of that look at last week's decision that's all it takes 200 years and really, in the last 40 or 50 years, of starting to promote an agenda that made its way all the way in the thinking, in the thinking, in the thinking, in the thinking, made it all the way to the Supreme Court. And just because it's legal doesn't mean it's right. Now, there's a, there's a whole can of worms there that we can unpack. Some of that, go listen to Rick's sermon. But some of this is raising a lot of questions as to what does it mean to engage in media? And how do we think through this? How do we engage in it? Next week, we'll start to, well, uh, well in two weeks, we'll start to unpack this even further. Um, but I just encourage you, if you have specific questions, like you're wondering about this artist or that artist or I don't know, whatever the case, don't hesitate to email me, text me, Facebook me, Instagram me, I don't care, whatever you want to do. And we'll try to we'll try our best to tackle that. Cool? Okay. So let's do this. Let's welcome in the middle school and we will get started here um, as we have an opportunity to mindfully engage.